Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. the penitentiary, freedom is something for which he'll pay any price. A clever and ingenious attempt to free Bill Rinker, serving a life term at the state penitentiary, took place on June 14th. thinks he wounded Rinker. What was Rinker in for? Life sentence for murder. How's the guard? Prison doctor doesn't give you much of a chance. I got a bulletin here on that stolen helicopter. Disappeared from Mayfield Airport about two weeks ago. If it's the one they used, it's got a range of two, 250 miles. Carries 40 gallons of gas. Now, so come on over here with me. Right here. That's the prison. That circle is roughly 200 miles. They can't get out of here without gassing up. Get the patrol chopper in that area. Right. How much farther? There it is. Well, I'll be able to get a decent bandage on him while you gas up. Setting we can account for, except three. One of those has got to be the stolen job. None of our men spotted a number in the chopper. Think they painted it out? Actually, a chopper's not like a car. You can't change plates. Call the radio, ask for help. Call civil defense. Tell them to alert their airplane spotters. Let's get more eyes on this job. Right. That'll have to do for now. We're all set. Joe. 
I'm not gonna be able to take much more of this. Let's shake it up. I don't get it. We haven't been a sighting in ten minutes. They landed somewhere, but but, but why? I figured they got a hideout. They stole a copter two weeks ago. They must have a place to keep it out of sight. And they might just try to stay there till we stop looking for them. No, I think it's one of two things. I think we shot up too bad to fly here. They got gas stashed away at the hideout. Let's see, it's 90 miles from here to the prison. If they flew from here to the prison and back, that's 180 miles. They'd have to gas up. This has got to be their new line of flight right in here. Highway Patrol, Johnson. Oh, do you regain consciousness at all? I see. Thanks very much. The guard died. 2150 to helicopter. 2150 to helicopter. Helicopter, bye. This is 2150. I want to set a rendezvous point. Watch your 1020. I'm over that knoll off Highway 31. I can put down there. I'll be there in 15 minutes. 10 4. I'll need another man. Garvey should be in that area. Have him meet me. taken off again. We're getting sightings. We're getting checks for all the patrol units and all the civilian units. I figure they gassed up and took off again. Are they headed in the same direction as they were before? Straight line, right from the prison. What do you think? Should we try to get them to a doctor? I spotted one about a mile away when I found the setup. I don't think he'll make it this way. We better go back. If we do, we don't have the same chance of getting away. Oh, maybe we've got a better chance. They'll take some of the heat off. Okay, you pick it. What'll it be? We'll go back. We can't let him die. If we don't deliver him alive, there's no payoff. Okay, I've got the new sighting. 10-4. Let's see now. Well, how do you like that? Last two sightings reported the chopper going in this direction. Now it's going in the opposite direction. How do you figure it? I don't know, but if those sightings are right, we should spot them any minute now. I want to get more units in the area. If they've turned around, they've probably got a reason. Let's take off. we got a better chance of spotting them by air.
What are we doing here? You passed out. Joseph, there's a doctor near here. I'm going to go get him. No. We planned and figured too long. Don't blow it now. There won't be any slip-ups. I said no! Bill, you ain't going to make it without a doctor. I guess you're right. I'll be right back. Headquarters to helicopter. Headquarters to helicopter. Helicopter five. I've got eight units closing off the area. We've had three civilian sightings. They're headed right in the area we figured they landed before. Get all units in the area to check abandoned buildings who could hide a chopper. Then know we'll be looking for them by air. Ten four. Ten four. There's a building off the left. Doesn't look like it's being used. Look at all the grass growing up around it. Let me have it. Let's set it down and take a look. I'll check it off. Ground units are checking possible areas north and east of your 1020. We'll work south. 10 4? 10 4. Yes? Turn around real slow, Doc, and don't make a sound. Come here. Put that junk down and listen. You're going with me, so get your bag ready. A buddy of mine's been hurt, and you're going to fix him up. What's wrong with your friend? He's got a slug in the shoulder. I see. Bullet wound. Well, uh, we'll have to stop for some antibiotics. I'm out. All right, you got a car? Yes. Good. We'll drive to the drugstore. I have to write a prescription. Well, start writing. Let me see that. All right, let's go. Never mind that. We're in a hurry. They must be down in the same area. The sightings have stopped. Pretty deserted area. Very few farms. We'll cover most of it by air. I'll have the other units close in. 2150 to headquarters. Oh, George, I wonder if you'd rush this. Sure, Doc. Sure, we'll take a minute. There you are, Doc. Anything else? No, George, not today. Give my regards to the missus. Give me highway patrol headquarters, please.
patrol continued its relentless search for Bill Rinker. So far, his freedom for one hour and 45 minutes had cost the lives of two men. Headquarters at 2150. 2150 by. I've got two reports, my tie-in. A druggist on the outskirts of Libertyville has been shot and killed. And a Dr. Karen has apparently disappeared. His wife called in. What makes you think he's disappeared? Maybe he's out on a call. Knocked over some expensive medicines. Didn't clean them up. He says he'd never do that except as a signal. 10-4. 2150 to all units. Look like Rinker and his buddies have knocked off another guy. They also kidnapped a the doctor. They're armed and dangerous. Use caution. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Let's get that thing in the air. We're going to find that hideout. I hope you didn't make any mistakes, Doc. I took an oath. I couldn't make any mistakes, as you put it, even if I wanted to. Well, what do you think? I think he'll live. He should rest and shouldn't be moved. For how long? Two or three days. Suppose we move him before that. He'll start bleeding. He's lost quite a bit of blood already. How about me? I'd like to leave now. Don't be in such a hurry, Doc. Does that oath you took let you walk out on him? Let's see how the patient does first. Uh. Oh. All patched up. You did a good job, Doc. Thanks. Well, how do you feel? How do I feel? Great, great. Let's get out of here. Well, wait a minute. The doc says you've got to stay two or three days. You're a dreamer, Doc. So... Oh. Patrol units have covered eight possible hideouts inside the circle so far. Let's keep it up and we've covered everything we can hide a chopper inside that circle. Hang on a minute. We're over that farmhouse I asked about. What about it? I check with county officials. It's up for tax sale. There's nobody living in it. We'll go down and check it out. 10-4? 10 10-4. 10 Sit down, Doc. You're making me nervous. What's that? It's a highway patrol copter. Let's get out of here. Are you sure that's the way you want it? I want distance between me and that pin. I'm sorry, Doc. Forget it, Ed. We don't need him anymore. I said forget it. He did his job. I'm okay. All right, you're the boss. about one mile outside of Libertyville on the old quarry road. We've spotted suspects. Make it fast. We'll stay directly overhead until you arrive. 10-4? 10-4. Morgan! 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 Morgan!
ground units are going to be too late. go back. You're going to have a lot of company this time. All right, take them out. Had enough flying for the day? Not the flying that gets me. It's playing tag, especially when they're trying to make you it. Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement, there are many instances in which more than one agency is needed to protect the public against a specific criminal. 
13 years ago, Tom Thornton was convicted in another state of the murder of his partner, Harold Sylvester, and sentenced to 20 years in prison. The motive was robbery. More than a half million dollars in cash and securities was taken from the safe and never recovered. Ten days ago, with time off for good behavior, Tom Thornton was released. You Thornton? That's right. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. The parole officer said I'd find you here. Where'd you expect to find me? London, Paris, Rome? Well, with 500,000 bucks, a man can go any place. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, then play it dumb. Let's go. Well, let's go where? You're square with the state for killing a man, but you're still on the hook for that money that was missing at the time of the murder. Oh, we're back to that again. Yeah, we're back to that. 500,000 in cash and securities. That's not easy to forget. You're talking in riddles. About eight days ago, the security started to show up. They checked with the original list. Well, I didn't turn them in. Let's find out. Come on. Center City that you picked up Thornton. They want you to find out if he has an accomplice. Okay. We can talk in my office. I've got nothing to say. Maybe you'll change your mind. Sit down. The Center City Police tell me you can go back for another seven years. For a murder I didn't commit. I'm not here to argue what a jury said. Now listen to me. You can play it tough, or you can be a nice guy and answer some questions. It's your play. I'm sorry. What do you want to know? You got to your brother's place, Sue, about 10 days ago, is that right? That's right. Have you been to Linwood since you got out? No. Freeport? No. Amityville? I haven't been to Amityville, Freeport or Linwood. Tell me, you know a fellow by the name of Herbert Stewart? Never heard of him. Maybe you know him under another name. Now you're talking in riddles again. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Securities who were missing at the time of the murder started turning up in Freeport, Amityville, and Linwood. They were turned in by a guy by the name of Herbert Stewart. And you think I'm Herbert Stewart? Either that or he was an accomplice in the original murder. I didn't have an accomplice. I didn't murder my partner and I don't know what happened to the money. I'm innocent. Oh, I know. You've heard that many times before from many people. But I am innocent. Can I speak to you a minute? Sure. Another teletype from Center City. More of the missing securities have turned up for redemption. Right here in Hempstead at the City Bank. Tell them I'll be right over. Why does a crook always think he's smarter than the law? Because the laws are administered by people, and people make mistakes. They made a mistake in my case. I'm not a crook, and I'm not a murderer. No matter what 12 men on that jury said. Sorry, Mr. Thornton, I can't buy that. You kept your mouth shut for 13 years, just so you could collect a half a million dollars. Let's see, roughly that figures to about, oh, $70,000 a year for the time you were in the pen. 35000 if you had a partner. That's a fair country salary. Thirteen years ago, my salary as president of the company was $50,000 a year. Why should I take a cut in salary, plus a conviction for a murder I didn't commit? We're going to find that out. Come on, let's go. Oh, send them in. Come in, gentlemen. I'm Dan Matthews. This is Mr. Thornton. Sit down. That's all right, thanks. I understand from Officer Morris that you're here in regards to those missing securities. Yeah, that's right. Do you know Mr. Thornton here? I don't believe so. Are you a customer of this bank? No. What about the man that redeemed the securities? Well, that was Herbert Stewart. Is he a customer of the bank? No. How can you redeem securities for a man that's not a customer of the bank, a man you don't even know? Well, those were call bonds. Uh, they're negotiable like money is. They can be turned in at any bank. I see. How well do you know Stuart? Not very well. I only met him once. Although I did have several phone conversations with him before he came in. Describe him, will you? Oh, a small, dapper man, bald, about 53 or 4, 140 pounds, lame in the left arm, some kind of paralysis. You sure it wasn't his right arm? 
I believe it was. And did he have a little thin mustache? Yes, yes, he did. Anything else? No, I only saw him once. That was two days ago. If you remember anything else, let me know, will you? I certainly will. You must be Dan Matthews. I'm Pearsall of Center City. Glad to know you. Figured you were much too smart for this, Thornton. In what way, Sergeant? Or is it Lieutenant? It's Lieutenant. And I figured you'd wait a little while before you started cashing any of those securities that we couldn't find. How did you ever make Lieutenant? Because of the work you did in my case? What happened to the bank? Got a description of his accomplice, Herbert Stewart. Good. None of the other bank managers was able to give us too good a description. APB on Herbert Stewart. He's kind of a dapper guy, about 5'3", 5'4", 140 pounds. He's bald and got a very thin mustache. Well, this is important. He's got a lame right arm. Recognize the description, Lieutenant? Are you sure? That's the description Carter at the bank gave us. I don't believe it. Do you want to tell him, Lieutenant? Or shall I give him the good news? Well, that description fits Harold Sylvester. The man Thornton was supposed to have murdered 13 years ago. What's the angle? I told you I was innocent. I told everybody I was innocent, but nobody would believe me. Now do you believe me, Lieutenant? How'd you get a conviction for murder without the body? We had all the evidence of murder. Blood stains, dentures, fingernail. And we found $5,000 worth of missing securities in Thornton's basement. What do you plan to do now, Lieutenant? Why don't you go back to your brother's place? We'll find Stuart. You mean you'll try to find Stuart? Well, let's call him Sylvester. Well, I'll be looking for him, too. And when I find him, I'm going to kill him. You're what? And there's nothing you can do about it. Because 13 years ago, I was convicted for the murder of Harold Sylvester. I paid the price for my crime. And I figure the state owes me this murder. Look here, Thornton. You're not living in a jungle. There are laws that'll take care of Sylvester. Nothing you can say will make me change my mind. When I find him, I'm going to kill him. Why don't you take it easy? We'll find him. And he's liable for the same punishment you received. How about giving me back the 13 years I lost? You can collect damages. From Sylvester? How much can he have left if he's forced to cash securities? I'm not going to let you kill a man, Thornton. I'm going to get Sylvester. I don't want damages. I don't want money. All I want are my 13 years back. And my friends. And my business and my reputation and all my dreams of tomorrow. Can you get them for me? I'm going to stop you, Thornton. I knew Sylvester for 15 years. I know what he'll do in any situation. I know what he's doing in this one. So long, gentlemen. Put a tail on him right now. Uh, I've been on the force for 25 years. The one nightmare I've always had was sending an innocent man to jail. Hey, I know how you feel. Well, look at it this way. It's your job to find evidence. The DA is to build a case. The jury to bring in a verdict and the judge to pass sentence. It was my evidence that built the case. Every time Thornton yelled that he was innocent, we yelled back that he was a liar. We called in the brain because we could never collect the rest of the securities and the money. But now I don't know anymore. We're going to have to find Sylvester before Thornton really becomes a murderer. Come on. The first report we received of someone cashing securities was here, Linwood. 24 hours later, Freeport. Two days later, Amityville. And today, here, Hempstead. Those towns cover an area about a thousand miles in three states. So wait a minute. Oh, you saw that too. Yeah, if Stuart or Sylvester's got a base of operation, he moves out from there, that should put him right about here. Glen Falls. Yeah. 
Contact Glenn Falls. Tell him a man answering Stewart's description might be living in that area. Then get in touch with Center City. Have him get a photo of Sylvester over to Glenn Falls right away. Tell him I'll be there in about two hours. You got it? Right. sending an innocent man to jail, now face Detective Pearsall, plus a new added terror, the terror of knowing that Harold Sylvester alive could legally be killed by Tom Thornton. 2371 to 2150. 2150, bye. Suspect still on the bus. Keep him inside, don't lose him. I want to know where he gets off. 10-4? 10-4. Sylvester or Stewart? No, not yet. We've checked the post office, bank, local stores. No one recognizes the description. How large is Glen Falls? Well, according to the latest census, slightly over 4,000. We've got to get to him before Thornton does. He may not even be in Glen Falls. Yeah. Highway Patrol, Clark. Uh, just a second. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Matthews. What's that? Tell him to keep at it. Right. Thornton just got off the bus in Glen Falls. Now, if Stewart's not Sylvester, he's got to be an accomplice. And I don't buy the idea that Sylvester's alive. That description fitted Sylvester too strongly. I'm convinced now that we're looking for Sylvester. Why did Thornton get off the bus at Glen Falls at this particular time, and what makes him think Sylvester's here? Thornton's no fool. Remember, he and Sylvester built a big business out of nothing in less than five years. You don't do that on luck. He could have figured Sylvester's whereabouts from the map, just as we did. Sylvester owns a car. A garage in this area might give us a lead. I still don't get it. For 13 years, he stayed undercover. Now he comes out into the open. Why? Does he think we'd forget about the securities and the money? Maybe he thinks we'll tie the redemption of the securities in with Thornton. Figures he's safe. 2371 to 2150. 2150, bye. Thornton's canvassing real estate offices and asking if anyone answering Sylvester's description has bought or rented a hilltop house. Stay with it. 10-4. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. Check the realty board. Get a list of all real estate brokers in this area. See if anybody answering Sylvester's description has bought or rented a hilltop house recently. 10-4? 10-4. Of course. Hilltop houses. Sylvester was named the king because he always wanted to stay on top of the heap. His house in Center City is on top of the highest hill. The company building is the tallest in town, and Sylvester has the penthouse suite. Uh, you asked me if I'd sold or rented a hilltop house. 
Well, this being a one-man office, I advertise all my listings in the local paper. Well, about a year or so ago, I had a listing for a hilltop house, and I rented it the day the paper came out. Who'd you rent it to? Oh, wait a minute. Now, let me check my file. Here it is. A Mr. Herman Sawyer. You remember what he looked like? You've got me. This chap called on the phone and said he'd rent it. And I asked him if he didn't want to see it first. He said no. If it's the highest hilltop house, he wanted it. And then he said he'd send me a check for the year's rent in the mail. And he wanted me to go and open the house and leave a lease there for him to sign, which I did. I got the signed lease in the mail the next morning. And he still lives there. The thing that makes me remember it, it's the first time I've never seen one of my clients. That answer your question? Oh, well, not quite. Where's this house located? Where Willow Road crosses Emerald Drive. Sergeant Garvey has lost Thornton. Also, real estate broker E.D. Chrisman reports rental of Hilltop House to Mr. Herman Sawyer on Willow Road near Emerald Drive. Sawyer, Stewart, and Sylvester. Contact Garvey. Have him meet me at Willow and Emerald. 10 4? 10 4. Checkmate. Hello, Harold. Tom! Sign at all? Just got here. Let's take a look. Hold it. I got here first, like I said I would. Now go back to your car. You can't save him. Don't be a fool, Thornton. Don't you be a fool, Matthews. I've got Sylvester tied to the chair. And I've got his gun. 
and I'm going to kill him. Inch by inch, a little at a time, just the way I died during those 13 years. Come back to your cars. I'll let you know when it's all over. Could be bluffing, but we can't take that chance. Let him think he convinced us. Tear gas in from here without any trouble. Tear gas won't stop him from pulling the trigger. In Thornton's present condition, he'll shoot if we try any of the conventional methods. Yeah, but we gotta get to him. Oh, this is the only approach to the house. The other side drops down the hill. We can't get in the front door, that's for sure. I'll try the back. You keep him busy. Go ahead and shoot. You'd like that. Nice and quick. Well, I've waited 13 years. And it's not going to happen that fast. What are you going to do? What do you think I should do to get full value for 13 years? What would you do? You always did want the most for your money. Always the cautious one. Playing it close to the vest. And you always had to be the king. The top of the heap. You even had to have a house on top of a hill. You know what you have? An emperor's complex. Well, the king is dead. Or you will be, soon. I was just testing. Stay back. I don't believe you. Tell him. Don't let him kill me. Don't let him kill me. There's nothing anybody can do to stop me. How does it feel to know you're going to die? You won't get away with it. I didn't. They convicted me of your murder. And now I'm going to give them the evidence they need. Your body. Thornton! Thornton! I told you to get away from here. Now this is your last chance. If you're not out of here by the time I count ten, I'm going to kill him. One, two, three. Okay, we're going. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I told you not to try anything or I'd kill him. Now get away from him. Don't make me kill you, too. Give me the gun, Thornton. You're no killer. He's mine. I paid 13 years of my life for him. And I'm going to collect. I told you I'd shoot. Don't you believe me? All right, Pierce Hall, come on in. Sorry, Thornton, but you're under arrest. Why? You were carrying a gun. For you, that's illegal. Let's go. You saved my life. I didn't come here to save you. Help her off. next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, the safest device in your car is you. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.